Hello and welcome to Mimosa Tech Talk, a podcast by Mimosa Networks. Hi, I'm Dustin. And I'm Eric. Today we're on episode number 43, Mimosa 5 Series Point to Point, Antennas, Adapters, and More. So you might be thinking, wow, that's almost the exact same title from your last podcast. And I'd be like, well, mm -hmm. how do I know if you watched my last podcast or not? So there's some things that overlap here. So we'll just go ahead and uh, talk about that and we'll dive right in. So today, PTMP or Point to Multipoint. Eric, you want to tell me what that means? What is point to multipoint? Yeah, PTMP. Well, I have a single radio access point at some fixed position, and I want to connect uh, a number of subscribers at different locations at varying distances from that AP. And so why would somebody choose to do point to multipoint? You know, why, why would somebody want to do in a, an urban area? What's the point? Why not just do a bunch of point to points? Yeah, sure. Uh, well, you, you, get, you, know, you get that last mile of fiber or, or copper. Uh, that might be uh, a challenge uh, in the, with the existing infrastructure. Uh, so why not uh, do it wirelessly over radio? So feed the uh, Internet into one radio and, and beam that signal out and have multiple client radios on, at each location. Right. And if you're doing multiple point-to-points, you're probably using more spectrum than you would with one point-to-multipoint access point. So... Uh, help save the spectrum, save the world, Eric. Let's use some point-to-multipoint radios instead of a bunch of point-to-points. And the reason I bring that up is because when I worked at a WISP, got off, you know, let me look here, I don't know, 12 years ago, ago now, or whatever ago. it was, you know, at, at some points we were just doing a bunch of different point-to-point radios from a rooftop when a simple point-to-multipoint radio would have sufficed. So. Oh, that's interesting. So you had, you had multiple point-to-points in one town, let's say. Yeah. In one town. And you're going like this. You, well, you need a pair. Here's a pair here, a pair here, a pair here. Why not just do a point to multi point, point oh radio? Boy. Well, you know, 12 years ago or right. whatever, uh, you know, point to multi point radios might not have had as We're much throughput as they do now. So, you know, for us, we needed to do dedicated circuits. So it and wasn't such a good idea back then. Were, you, were there multiple locations, say, within one town? And did you use a sector, a bunch of sectors, or would you use any Omni? Directionals on those APs? Oh, no. They were just uh, directional, you know, basically like C5Xs pointed at different oh, okay. businesses. You know, from one single rooftop, we were pointing to a bunch of different businesses. So. Nice. What, what, what was the feedback like from the customers? Well, like you know, it was too slow on point-to-multipoint, so we had to do multiple point-to-points. But, you know, this day and time, you know, point-to-multipoint has come a, a very long way. Sure. So evolved, yep. people's Speeds. deployments have changed. So... Uh, doing point, point to multipoint with say Mimosa A5C or A5X, you know, throughput is much greater now. So uh, these are our two five series point to point radios. Uh, A5C has been around a long time. A5X has been around for several years now. So A5C, as you can see, if you're watching from home, is a four port radio. It has 750 plus megabits aggregate using auto TDMA mode. You can do 20, 40, 80 megahertz channels on it. It has GPS for co-location and for coordination of the client radios. And this is meant for short to long range uh, deployment. So we've seen uh, people deploy these in short distances with, say, the N5360 Omni antenna. Mm -hmm. We've seen these deployed with sector antennas and clients connected over 10 miles away. You know, it just depends on, you know, how you deploy your network, you know, where you're located, how rural you are. Um, you know, the more rural you are, the, the longer links you can have because you'll have less interference. Yep, yep. And, yeah, you bump up the, uh, you increase the uh, size of the gain of the antenna or a little dish on each, each client as, as required, and like you mentioned, out several miles out. Uh, A5C, very versatile with four ports. So you might put a four-port sector antenna or maybe two sectors at aiming at specific directions mm -hmm. or maybe a four port omni and, and that's a specific application uh, and so forth yeah so then yeah. the next radio we have here the a5x is a two port antenna so the big difference between this radio and the a5c that we just talked about is that the a5c has four ports so you use the the two extra ports for beam forming gain so it's a four by four radio the clients are two-by radios, so you get the extra 3 dB on the downlink, so you can go further distances with that. That's why I call that a long-range access point. So that, ec that extra uh, energy is, is, is not wasted. Right. Uh, we see TDMA, so 
Onboard GPS on this one too, Dustin? That's right. All right. So this one with two ports, it's it's more of a short to mid-range. Uh, a lot of people deploy these because they're very low profile. They're very small. Uh, they're only, yeah, you know, maybe eight inches tall. I see it IP67 gland for uh, full weather. Absolutely. On the boot. They're IP67. And, uh, how about the uh, are these LEDs on the uh, the cover? Those are LEDs. They are. They're they're lights that show up right where those icons are. Yep. Yep. So for the A5X, it's a little lower power. It's it's a way cheaper unit. So it's 500 megabits or up to 500 megabits aggregate using auto TDMA. You also get 20, 40, or 80 megahertz channels out of it. Mm -hmm. uh, it's diecast aluminum, and again, it's a short to mid range uh, access point. So. You're not going to get the 10 plus miles out of this probably, but you can certainly do five or six miles on this thing for sure. And available through our uh, online distributors and so forth and our online help pages for information. Mm -hmm. And the good thing about these radios is that they're connectorized again. So, you know, the A5C is four ports. So you can do a four port antenna like mm -hmm. the KP example we have here or the MTI example or even our own Mimosa antenna. Or you can do two two-port sectors, which I think Eric mentioned, where you can face them in the same direction or different directions mm -hmm. for more coverage. The A5X, connectorized two-port. Again, you can use any two-port uh, antenna solution mm -hmm. that supports 5 or 6 gigahertz. So it really opens you up to being able to hot swap a different vendor's radios out and ours in. And that's where connectorized really shines. Yeah, and a note on the cables, you want to keep the cable run as, as short as possible. That way you uh, ensure there's uh, less loss in that uh, little jumper there. Uh, you also want to weatherize uh, the connectors um, and, uh, and make sure there's a kind of a, a nice sweep or a little drip loop there uh, so you can avoid uh, any chance of water ingress. So I'm sure most of our viewers or listeners are professionals, but for those that aren't, or, or haven't really done a lot of this, why, why do you need to weatherproof these? What does that mean? Yeah, yeah. Well, we've got things like uh, self-vulcanizing the black uh, tape um, and then the coax, uh, kind of a coax tape or seal or putty. And we want to keep moisture out of the, each of those four ports, for example, on the a, this A5C. Um, if, you, uh, if, if you experience water in the coax connection or in the port, uh, you, can have you can have some uh, performance suffer in, in that chain or that stream, for example. And from personal experience, you, you, you will see either a complete disconnect of clients or, mm -hmm. you know, if it's point to point the other end of the radio, uh, if you've got water in there or, you know, the signal will drop 20, 30, 40 dB, depending on how much water is in that cable. So, mm -hmm. and sometimes even if you think they're sealed up good, you still get moisture in there from, you know, temperature changes and whatnot. So it's not 100% going to keep it dry, but it will definitely help you a, a, a ton. And, and you want to you uh, uh, put the best cables you can af afford on there. Uh, we speak to like LMR 400, that's about four tenths of an inch uh, outer diameter, for example, on the black jacket. Uh, there's other types of uh, coax, but use the best you can. Keep it as short as you can, and uh, we're we're not uh, we're well above one gigahertz, so we're we're out of the UHF range. We're in the SHF super high frequency range, and the losses in a cable run start to go up. Uh, so you want to keep it short and 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 use a nice quality cable on there. Great. So let's go ahead and move on to our client radios here. So uh, we have the C5X which is, can double as a point-to-point -point radio, but in this example, it's a point-to-multi-point client. And we have the C5C, which is our connectorized client. And the C5C has been out for quite a long time now. It is, uh, Seven, eight. it's probably been around since 2017, 2018, yeah. and it's, it truly is our, one of our best-selling radios. Uh, this one in particular has, we've unlocked uh, over uh, 500,000 of these units around the world. And the C5X is, is literally right behind it at yep. like 450,000 radios wow. unlocked. So huge, huge hits around the world. You know, they're very cost-effective radios, and they, they both have their own, you know, special places in people's networks. So we'll talk about the C5C here real quick. It's connectorized. It's a low-cost. It's a very low-profile radio, and it can be uh, used with any connectorized antenna. So you can just hot-swap some you know, competitor product out, swap this in, and, and just go. Mm -hmm. And it's a real lightweight plastic as well. So those are the, the smaller uh, SMA uh, uh, RP 
connectors on top. So just pay attention when you terminate this or go from this C5C into an antenna that you have the right uh, jumpers. And you don't want to use RF adapters, not necessarily because there might be you know, a third or half a dB loss using a, a $4 adapter uh, to, to make the connection right, but uh, because uh, we, we don't want to introduce anything. We want to keep it nice and clean, so get, get a coax jumper that's terminated with the correct uh, connectors on both ends of it. Right. And then the other here is the C5X. It's a it's one of our twist-on radios. It's low cost, low profile, and it's die-cast aluminum. This one is IP67, where the C5C is only IP55. So this one is, it, you know, ready for the, the harshest environments. Yeah, and a note on the C5X. So there is a built-in uh, 8 dBi uh, little horn antenna on there. However, the beam width on that is fairly wide. I, I believe it's at 54 degrees, so it's fairly wide. It's certain, it has specific kind of applications. Uh, maybe there's not a, a lot of other C5Xs uh, around it in the neighborhood. Uh, but typically, you want to put a higher gain antenna, a twist on antenna on there. Oh, you mean beam. like those right there? Those are the ones. So we've Very got good. a 12 dBi horn, a 16 yep. dBi horn, a 20 dBi dish, and a 25 dBi dish. There we go. Yep. So the the lower s DBI uh, antenna or horn, as you might want to say, is a wider beam width, mm -hmm. so shorter range. And as you go up in DBI, that increases the distance and you know condenses the beam down into more of a, a yeah. narrower beam. We want to uh, mitigate uh, interference too. Let's just say in that neighborhood, and you have a dozen, uh, you have a dozen. Uh, C5Xs, um, and and the the neighbors are all near each other. Or all the all the client radios are near each other, near the houses down the street. Well, what you want to do is you want to go with a narrower, or, or a higher gain dish and kind of take that beam width down. So keep, keep keep things clean, maximize the throughput, and so on. Great. Well, you know there are people who go ten plus miles, and you know like with the C5C, they have a, a connectorized two foot dish that they might use for the ten mile plus shots. So I know we talked about this in our last podcast, but again, there's no guarantees that the folks listening or watching have heard or watched the last podcast mm -hmm. if point-to-point -point doesn't interest them. So I want to make sure that people know that we have now a 30 dBi antenna that's coming out. Uh, we're aiming to have this available here in the next couple of weeks for people to start purchasing. Mm -hmm. uh, as far as I'm aware, that, you know, these are on the way to Malaysia right now so that we can start distributing those out. So Great. this is the N5X30KP. So it's a 30 dBi dish. It supports B5X and C5X. Uh, it's very easy to ship. It comes in a very small box. It comes in pieces. Mm -hmm. So in you know triangle shaped pieces, you kind of see from you know from home if you're watching. You know the it's mm -hmm. kind of sliced into six different pieces there. Mm -hmm. And this thing supports 4.9 to 6.4. Is there anything you want to add about this? Since we already talked about this I, in the last I, one, um, I, th I think uh, I think you uh, you hit it there. Um, yeah, we call those uh, on that primary reflector the big big two foot dish there. So those are the pedals, those little pie shapes. So we're able to get the packaging real nice and tight, nice and small. So that that should be nice and handy for uh, for shipping. Beam width, you're looking at a right around five degrees, so pr fairly tight. So if you're pushing. Uh, uh, more than a couple of miles, or you're, you're running uh, 20 plus miles, etc. cetera. Uh, you get the compass out and uh, peak the signal. All right. And then the last uh, thing we'd like to talk about, which again, we covered last uh, time on the podcast, but you know, doesn't hurt to get the, the news out again on another one is mm -hmm. twist on adapters. So, you know, earlier I was talking about how, you know, I, I really like connectorized radios. It gives you more options. It allows yeah. you to connect to any third party antenna. We've had some great vendors around the world uh, create some twist-on adapters. So these screw into the, the B5X or the C5X, yeah. and it, you're effectively making it a connectorized radio because it has the, the N ports or the RPSMA ports on them where you can you know, connect them to any 5 or 6 gigahertz antenna that you can just continue to use your own antennas and to just use these at radios instead of having to swap the dish and the radio out. Yeah, very uh, popular and versatile uh, uh, design, and it's been around for a bit. And so we have them, uh, we'll have them for sale for uh, our customers. Yep. Well, AOGCOM, NetPoint, and Telemart all have them available now. And, okay. uh, you know, we're partnering with these guys, or at least working with these guys mm -hmm. to, you know, try and get the word out so people know that these exist. That way, 
you know, if you don't want to use a twist on antenna, you don't have to. So I, I personally am trying to look out for folks and Eric's looking out for folks here. We're, we're trying to, you know, make it as easy for people as possible. So, all right, Eric, well, I guess that's it for our show. I uh, guess we'll see you guys on our next uh, podcast. All right. Thanks, Dustin. Yeah. Thanks, crew. Yeah.